On this episode, we chat with Mark Siegel from Golf Asian about the golf scene in Thailand. So if you're an advanced golfer, a newbie just getting started, or simply curious about how this unique sport works in Asia, you'll love this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. What the crap? This is the Bangkok Podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who came to Thailand in 2001 and is now on a mission to try and create fusion Thai dishes with maple syrup. I'm really <laughs> curious about how maple somtam is going to turn out. I'm down. You take out the fish sauce, put in maple syrup, I'm in. Whew, I might be onto something here. <laughs> and I am Ed Knuth, an American who came to Thailand on a one-year teaching contract 21 years ago. Nice. Fell in love with giving a 10% tip in restaurants and being treated like I was super generous. So I never left. It's 15% standard in, in America, right? Dude, you get you get five you, you get five percent here, you're a high roller. <laughs> I used I used to be friends with a guy who was he, he used to force everyone at his table to give at least 20%. Like, we'd all go out for dinner with Lonnie. And Lonnie Wait, you, like, you mean no. in Thailand or back home? No, this is back in when I was in high school. Oh, okay. We'd go for dinner. And he's like, no, everyone has to, like, he was super into tipping. And he would, like, <laughs> I mean, he would, like, make, he would, like, Mr. Pink and Reservoir Dog sitting around the table <laughs> talking about how he's not going to tip. He was the opposite, making everyone else tip 20% because he was, like. Oh, that was funny. You know, these people deserve it. Anyway. Well, Thai people in general, in general, I would say they tip less. I think you're right. Yeah. So you give 10%, you're, you're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We want to give a big thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Patrons get a whole bunch of cool stuff, including our ad-free regular show a day early, behind the scenes, photos, and videos of our interviews, discounts on swag, access to our Discord server, and various other things that aren't available to regular listeners. But best of all, patrons also get an unscripted, uncensored bonus episode every week where we riff on current events and random topics. We just finished recording this week's bonus show and we chatted about the arrest of policeman Joe Ferrari and his suspiciously lavish lifestyle, the controversy over a replica of Angkor Wat that's being built in Buriram, and a request for patrons to help us with an idea for a future show where we'll discuss how you level up as an expat in Thailand. To become a patron, head to bangkokpodcast.com forward slash support. Yeah, good times. All right. Well, on this episode, we welcome a young fellow by the name of Mark Siegel, who is the managing director of Golf Asian, one of Asia's biggest and best known golf tour operators. Now, while neither Ed nor I play golf, the sport has a major presence in Asia, and Thailand is one of the top destinations for golfers looking to get out there and whack some balls around after, before, or even during their vacation on the beach. So we wanted to find out more about the golf scene here, how you get into the game if you're interested, and what the future of golf looks like here in Thailand. So here is my very cool conversation with Mark Siegel. All right. Well, we're very happy to have on the show a young gentleman by the name of Mark Siegel, who is the president, CEO, uh, big top hat, commander in chief at Golf Asian, which is one of the, from what I can see anyway, one of the largest uh, sort of inbound golf tour operators in Asia. Uh, Mark, welcome to the show. Am I am I on the right track here? Oh, thanks for the young introduction, Greg. That's very flattering. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, you're on the right track. Yeah, so so tell us a little bit about about your company then. Um, uh, full disclosure here uh, to our listeners and to yourself: I am not a sports guy, which has been well established on the podcast before. I'm not interested in sports in any way, shape, or form, including golf. Um, but I am in the minority. I understand that, and I know that golf in Thailand is a massive draw, and a ton of people do it. So I thought it'd be cool to discuss with you, you know, the ins and outs, the whys, and um, let's talk about what Thailand offers the golf community. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about that. Tell us about Golf Asian. Okay, well, Golf Asian's a, uh, like you said, inbound golf tour operator. We organize uh, golf trips for people from around the world who want to come to Thailand, uh, specifically Bangkok, to play golf and enjoy a excellent vacation. Um, we have people from U.S., Canada, Europe, Australia, 
uh, and around Asia uh, of the predominant nationalities of people coming into Thailand. And it's been a uh, been a wonderful journey since I've been here for the last 19 years, uh, the last 18 of which I was uh, promoting golf in Thailand specifically. And I, I was reading a, a little bit of research in coming up to our conversation here, and uh, I saw this story on Asia Sentinel, and it summed up the what I don't know quite nicely. And it said, uh, let me just read these couple of quick paragraphs. It says, um, golf in Asia, full of contradictions and, issue, and issues that must be resolved is under the microscope, a sport with 100 billion spent on travel worldwide. It is popular and beneficial to the countries that focus on it. With that kind of money spent on golf travel, there is no other sport with that kind of tourist pull because no other sport with its popularity depends so much on the venue upon which it's played. A world-class golf course can support an entire local economy as it has the capability of bringing in tourist dollars from all around the world. In 2012, Thailand was ranked as the third largest golf destination in the world behind only the United States and Spain. That was 10 years ago. That might have changed by now. But I said that it also says that might be surprising as the United Kingdom is regarded as the home of golf and boasts many famous ancient destination courses. Yeah, well, that survey, uh, we've participated in that and it's uh, accurate, actually. So you want to know why uh, golf is so popular uh, here as opposed to other places? Well, the article quite mentioned it clearly. Uh, first of all, for travel, the only other sport that the place where the sport is conducted makes an impact in how the sport's played is skiing. Because skiing and golf, the field has no regulation. You could have a large one, small one, uphill, downhill, side hill, near the ocean, near the mountains, whatever. So compared to like basketball, football, hockey, baseball, the field is very regulated in terms of the size, shape, and elevation. Mm. So there's no real purpose to travel other than to play a team that lives in another country. But for golf, um, golfers continue uh, year after year, trip after trip, vacation after vacation to try different places. And then it lends itself perfectly to travel and while you're traveling to play golf at a new golf course. Yeah, I guess that's interesting, right? Like no one ever says like, oh, I got to go and try out that new hockey rink in uh, in right. Thailand or that right. new, right. you know, or that new basketball court in Australia because it's all the same around the world. Same, it's not. No, yeah, no. but it, it, I, I, I get it when people say, oh, there's a this really cool golf course in Scotland or Thailand or Dubai or whatever. So what does Thailand offer someone who wants to play golf? Um, again, forgive my, my sort of ignorance of it, but if, if I'm, if I'm going to start playing sports in a tropical country, walking around on a largely unshaded expanse of grass in the heat is, is not really what I, what I sort of (laughs) gravitate to. So what does, what does Thailand offer? Why do people come here of all places? Well, you might gravitate to that in the Canadian winter when you're up to your eyeballs and snow, (laughs) it's probably better (laughs) when your car, you have to unfreeze the engine because the gasoline is solid or actually yeah that's probably preferable i'll tell you something that you might be surprised about um when people say why golf in thailand i often ask them uh or tell them if you want to play good golf you're better off staying at home don't come here Oh, oh yeah the reason people come is for the experience of golfing it's not for the golf itself and as you know just being living here yourself uh you're here for the experience i'm sure just like i am um, golf or not. So golf takes about four hours a day to play around. There's another 20 hours a day. You have to do something. Um, golf in Thailand is one of the few places that it's uh, at or adjacent to or very close to or can team up very nicely with a uh, very important, major, successful <clears throat> tourist destinations. So the other 20 hours of the day, uh, yeah, you walk four hours in the hot, sweaty sunshine. And the other 20 hours, you might be getting it. Thai massage, eating Thai food, looking at Thai entertainment, enjoying the sight sounds in the rest of the country, just like all other tourists do. And you get to play golf at the same time. So that's a real attraction. I see. Interesting. So it's, it, I mean, it's almost, it's almost uh, it, 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 disingenuous to say it's a, it's a golf holiday. It's more popular, probably better to say it's a Thailand holiday with a bit of golf thrown in. So there's two types of holidays. One is when people go on a holiday, like let's say you go to Phuket sandbox and you just want to go lay on the beach. And one day you wake up, you're a little bored or not much to do. You can go play golf. So that, that would be a holiday with golf. But there are other people that say, wow, the Phuket Sandbox, they have eight golf courses in Phuket. I'm going to go there for six days and play the best six courses and go home. And that's a golf holiday specifically for golf. Of course, between those rounds of golf, you're probably also lying on the beach or exploring the island or doing some water sports, things like that. 
So it's right. easy to combine both. And, I, and I'm reading a little bit more about it too. And it says that, um, you know, there's, there's often some controversy with how golf courses are designed because they use non-native um, grasses and, and features and stuff like that. But there's also a push to uh, integrate sort of more native flora into the, into the golf courses too, which can change the whole makeup of a game. So what's what's the what's that like in Thailand? Is is there like controversy over that here? Are the way they design courses changing here to sort of incorporate more local, native uh, features? Um, there's two schools of thought regarding golf course designs. The one that the environmentalists uh, always highlight is that golf course takes up usable land that could be used for housing or farming, mm-hmm. and then there's um, it's only kind of accessible to very wealthy people and the farmers or the homeowners would suffer if they gave up their land to golf courses. But when you look at it closely, that really doesn't have much credibility because most golf courses are built on land that's unarable in the first place. They're built along beaches, uh, along cliffs on seashores that just have fields of scrub there. There's not housing or there's not farms there. Other courses are built on top of mountains. There's also no farming going up on the top of mountains. Um, The other school of thought is golf courses nowadays, like you mentioned, are using more and more local grasses, more and more local or no fertilizer whatsoever, but very, very little. So that the economic benefit of the golf course, let's say on a beach land, which is just purely sand, a golf course could support a whole city of people in terms of economics. Uh, Those people have houses already and they, need income. So there's a huge amount of income potential being brought into the area from golf, as well as using land that has no other use. So in Thailand then, um, so I'm in Bangkok, what are some, what are some of the uh, really popular or best courses within, within an easy day's drive for me? Well, Bangkok's very good because there's 60 golf courses of all levels. So if, if you're a total beginner and live here like yourself, or maybe some of the other listeners who want to get started, uh, there's about 20 courses within 40 minutes of Sukhumvit Road that are owned by the Thai government. Uh, they're municipal courses. Mainly the military owns them, but they're open to the public. Uh, very accessible. Green fees, maybe 10 US dollars to play golf. The so you use cor- $10 to play yeah. eight, 18 holes? Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. not expensive at all. <laughs> no. So uh, from a expatriate living here or someone who has family, young pe- kids at home that want to get started, um, Thailand's unique in all of the other Asian countries that there's inexpensive golf available. The, the reason is because it's owned by the military. So there's no uh, profit incentive and the land costs, obviously there's no land cost. Um, and like I said, about a third of the courses in the whole country, uh, particularly around Bangkok, are fall in that category. Uh, they may not be the ones that uh, we're doing a lot of business with for tourists coming into the country. The tourists are probably looking for the best possible golf course they could find. Um, but in terms of people getting started or people wanting to try the sport or people having young kids that don't want to, don't know if they're going to make the investment yet, um, golf very accessible. Right. I, I, the last time I was doing anything golf was Scott. I think it was probably 12 years ago when a buddy of mine and I visited a driving range, um, mm-hmm. just on Petbury road by Tong law there yeah. by RCA. I'm not yeah. even sure if it's still there. Um, and it was fun, uh, mostly because I think guys just like smacking things with clubs. Uh, it's a bit of a caveman appeal to that. <laughs> uh, and we had fun, but I mean, walk me through, say, say I'm a new guy, which I am, say I want to start up golf. What, what do I, what do I do? Where do I go? What do I buy? And how much does it cost? To get started in golf, you all, all you need to do is go back to one of those driving ranges that you can see around your house or just look up where there's big nets in the city. And you can, usually the driving ranges have some spare clubs you can borrow. And the cost of a tray of balls, which is about 40 baht, so about less than two US dollars, you can go and start hitting some golf balls uh, with your friends or family uh, and see if you like it. I mean, if, if just hitting balls or if you tend to get an knack of it or catch on to it, then you can go kind of to the next step and look at either getting some lessons uh, which there are going to be golf pros hanging around the driving ranges. So happy to give you lessons, of course, for a fee. Or you can go further and look at getting a set of entry golf clubs. Uh, for clubs, there's two different places in Bangkok. You can get very good 
and very inexpensive secondhand clubs, I mean, a whole set of clubs for maybe 200 US dollars. Uh, one is down in Tania Plaza, which is off of Selam Road. It's actually attached to BTS Selam uh, stop. Uh, the other one is out near Dunmong Airport. There's a, it's like a golf flea market. They bring in a container load of golf clubs every month. And there's everything from Japanese, American, uh, local made clubs and They'll help you put this together a set easily and inexpensively. Yeah, Tania Plaza is is crazy. It's a it's an interesting soy right at the Saladang BTS station, yeah. and it's a very very Japanese centric soy. There's really good sushi restaurants in right. there, <laughs> and uh, it's also one of the one of the few places in Bangkok where you can buy tickets for the Shinkansen Bullet Train in Japan uh, down there, which you need to do before you go to Japan. You can't buy them in Japan <laughs> for some reason. Um, and of course, there's there's just a ton of of, of golf shops in there selling all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It's the largest golf shopping mall in the world. There's 60 golf shops under one roof. They really? Sell, yes. They sell everything from new branded equipment, like you know, your friend who works for Titleist, they have an outlet there, all the way to uh, secondhand clubs, people trading them in. Some of them buy them outright. Some of them, they're, they're on consignment. And then they also sell knockoffs, uh, clubs that uh, imported through gray market channels that you can find some great deals on, although like with everything, buy everywhere. And um, this, believe me, we have uh, many, many groups of people coming in, men and ladies. Usually the ladies end up shopping the most. Uh, in this case, the men, we got to drag them out when they're closing the shopping mall. So it's, oh. <laughs> it's a total reversal of roles. And uh, many people come with no, no golf clothing. They just go to Tanya Plaza on the first day and buy maybe 10 golf shirts, all different colors that, that inexpensive, you know, textiles in Thailand are uh, very good value. And then they have the whole golf set or they bring Christmas presents back for every one of the families and they just do it one shot at the shopping mall there. I do have to say that I think one of the cliches about golf that is true is, 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 is those fashion choices that a lot of golfers make are, <laughs> are, are pretty amusing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people like to stand out and there are some patterns that, you know, a mile away, you'll, you wouldn't be caught dead in that. But on the golf course, people seem to like it. I guess maybe that's what they're going for, right? I mean, if you've got mi little missiles whipping at you at 400 miles an hour, you want to be wearing <laughs> yellow and pink plaid. I don't know. <laughs> Each his own. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I mean, but there, 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 there is also uh, very expensive uh, inroads yeah. into golf, too. I mean, imagine there must be courses in Bangkok and Thailand that are they're just like, out of reach for most people. There's yeah. equipment that's out, uh, you know, obscenely expensive. There's, there's got to be that level of player too, right? Yeah. So of course, for the serious player or the, the wealthy people, there's uh, professional level golf courses in Thailand. Uh, let's say Alpine Golf Club in Bangkok. Tiger Woods has come there twice and won in both events that he's played. Uh, this Thai Country Club, a little bit south of town, it's also a world class stop on. Uh, Asian tour every yearly stop. And then there's courses up in Phuket and Wahin and Pattaya and Chiang Mai all over the country that green fees are maybe $200 around. And, but you're playing where, you know, golf pros would play and they're manicured and they have facilities that you expect or see on TV. And you can basically play the same courses that pros can play. I see. Okay. So tell me a bit about this thing I was reading that uh, top what's it called Top Golf? They're Golf. building a massive new complex in Bangkok. What's yeah. what's happening with that? Uh, do, do you know about Top Golf from the United States? Not a clue. Yeah. No. Uh, top Golf is a little bit like a bowling alley when we were growing up. Um, people go there to socialize and do a lot of drinking, and at the same time <laughs> they, they they play a sport. When you go in and set up like a discotheque and you get a certain area to yourself, like a table and a area to hit the golf ball so you and your friends could kind of hang out there and they'll obviously they'll have a hostess serving you drinks uh food or whatever else you want during your time there you rent it by the hour and then the golf balls themselves have a computer chip inside so there's a machine that actually tracks the ball where they go and they have all these games you can play like hitting wow. certain targets and um comparing your hit to other people hitting at the same time and then the winners can get prizes or get vouchers to come back. And it's it's a very much of a socialized experience with a little bit of golf. What do they say? Is, 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 is it drinking beer with golf on the side or something? Yeah. And it's, it's very, very popular with people entering the sport, uh, particularly in the 20 to 30-year-old category. 
Interesting. It says, this says here, the new Top Golf Mega City venue is projected to employ more than 400 people. Uh, the three-floor entertainment complex covers more than 47,000 square meters, 29 rye, which is the size of seven football fields, and will include 98 outdoor hitting bays with comfortable seating for up to 600 players at any time. Multiple bars and restaurants, large event rooms, and much more. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Wow. It'll go over very well here where the ties value the experience of getting together, the socialization aspect of it. You know, a golf course, it's quite serious. It's hard to talk to other people other than the people in your group. But here you can come with 30 friends and uh, right. spouses and have a great time the whole evening. It's well, it sounds like these guys could have opened that anywhere in the world. Why Bangkok? Well, they do have other facilities already in Australia and Mexico and England. And they chose Southeast Asia. Uh, the Bangkok one is the first center, I think, because of the potential of uh, number of players that play golf in Thailand versus other Southeast Asian countries are the highest. It's about 600,000 golfers already here. And it's probably another 600,000 would start the game if there's such a facility as Top Golf. Mm. No, no international travel. That's just the local market. It's huge. It's really interesting you mentioned the microchip in the golf ball. That sounds like a, a like a no brainer that would take the sort of the ability to keep track of things to the next level. That's a really smart thing to do because yeah. I know as far back as me being a, like a, a, a young teenager seeing golf on TV, I was always in awe of the ability of the cameraman to track a white yeah. golf ball against a white yeah. cloudy sky. Yeah. Yeah. Or even the golfer himself to see the golf ball. It's hard. So yeah. Yeah, this is going to be. It's revolutionary. It changes the whole thing. And you can envision all sorts of games uh, besides just hitting the ball into a hole. But you can aim for targets and get the feedback immediately. And for serious golfers, too, it gives them a lot of feedback and allows them to improve. It's not just mm. for beginners. I, I, it's interesting you mentioned bowling, too, because, uh, I mean, where, where I'm from, bowling is kind of a redneck, goofy sport that you do with your buddies, like you said, to drink beer first and then also maybe bowl. And it's just a, la a good laugh, you know, yeah. but in Thailand, they sort of taken it and elevated it now. And I'm sure you've been to bowling alleys in Thailand. It's almost like a high. So experience, like yeah. it's either, it's either a high. So experience where you go and like take cool photos and hold the right. ball and like, you know, right. Or it's just like this big party with this oomph, oomph, oomph music and flashing lights and stuff. So they've taken it and sort of really made it its own unique uh, spin, uh, no pun intended. Is 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 something like that going to happen with golf? Um, uh, that's top golf. Top is, golf. Top golf. <laughs> exactly that. That's the best analogy you could make uh, for high soap people bringing their friends and want to take selfies and make it into an entertainment venue. Maybe they'll have movie stars to take pictures with or cutouts of famous golf people. Or uh, it's exactly that. We do the right. same thing for golf. Where is this top golf thing going to be? A uh, mega bang now. It's in the field being sense. built now, right in front of the Mega Bagnav. You, when you drive in off to the right, there's a large piece of land they're clearing and just cranes up there constructing the facility. Is there any chance that I could start a second business by putting on like a suit of armor and, and being like a live target running around out on the on the driving range? <laughs> I'm sure you can. I mean, that, you that can sounds kind of fun, right? You can dress up as the Michelin man, put tires around you so the balls just bounce off of you. And you can have oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, there <laughs> we go. <laughs> pictures of you. <laughs> getting hit or picking up golf balls and uh right maybe get hit me of, with a golf ball you win a free round or whatever and yeah. you can track who hits me with a golf ball with a microchip i say it's a no-brainer maybe a football helmet on your head and you can <laughs> yeah well with all the food i've been eating on this lockdown some would say i might not even need tires around my body <laughs> well because the only the only um the only experience with with really with golf entertainment is happy gilmore which i still maintain of all of all the sports movies i've seen which is not a lot that's probably my favorite ever um very inaccurate representation of golf i think but uh, have you ever seen lot. caddyshack years ago that's years a, ago that's yeah. a good one too i guess so it's a bit dated but i think happy gilmore is more my my <laughs> comedy style <laughs> although caddyshack is 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 for a good reason considered you know a classic in the pantheon of sports movies yeah well it's a lot a lot of variety I mean, obviously, it's a serious game. When you play professionally, there's a lot of money at stake. And when you're traveling on tours, it's a big investment. Uh, but there's also a lot of fun side to golf for people who live here in Bangkok. Some of the other listeners, uh, hopefully, after they hear us talking, might want to go out to a driving range and just try hitting a few balls, see how it is. It's a very low entry barrier to get started. 
Yeah. So say, say, say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a listener in another country and I want to come to Thailand to play a bit of golf too. And I, and I look up golf Asian, what walk me through the process? What is, what do I do? Yeah. If you uh, look us up, we can be found online easily or through any the major golf apps. Uh, we'll get back to you and ask you a few questions. If you, what your level of golf is, what you want to accomplish during your trip. And we'll propose a couple of different options in terms of, uh, whether it be pure golf or golf with some sightseeing or golf with some culinary experiences. And then we'll suggest uh, activities for each day, a hotel to stay at, or if you want to go to maybe Bangkok and another location or just stay in Bangkok. And uh, we'll put a proposal together for you and help you with your trip, assign someone to meet you on arrival and handle and help you throughout your whole trip until you go back as a happy golfer. All right, cool. And for you personally, where where do you golf in Bangkok and or, or Thailand? Where's your where's your preferred place to go? Um, I golf often at a golf course called Royal Gems Golf City, which is, uh, believe it or not, a replica of Augusta Golf Course in the United States. Oh, someone, really? someone, someone built a, a uh, exact replica of holes from around the world and put them in, in one course here. So many times people who are looking to play some of the exclusive private clubs around the world can't travel all around the world. They can come to Bangkok and play them all in one place and oh, take pictures and say that they've been to and played uh, replicas of the famous courses they see on TV. Uh, I played there myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's another Thai um, ingenuity and another way to get people out on the golf course and it's very attractive to tourists and it's open to locals as well. That's an interesting, uh, you know, spin on it. Yeah. yeah. Is there any, is there any copyright problems with that or trademarks or whatever? Yeah. They're not able to use the, uh, original course names. So they have to, uh, mention that's inspired by those courses. It's not a copy of, so they've taken maybe the Google maps, uh, flyovers and had some designer try his best to uh, reverse engineer the, the whole from topographical <laughs> maps. And they're not able to use the courses names in their own advertising or website or on any of their scorecards or printed material. But everybody knows it's uh, those holes are inspired by some famous golf holes around the world. Oh, that's interesting. And so there are different ones at the course. So like one hole is inspired yeah. by this golf course, another one by yeah. that golf course. Yeah. It's a nice experience to play courses that either unaccessible or too far away or it's all one course that's kind of remote. You can all play them together at the same time. Yeah. yeah. The same size and length. So that's the attractive part about playing there. Well, you've piqued my interest again here, Mark. Um, <laughs> I, I, I do have to say, I, I'm probably not going to take up golf as a regular thing, but I do remember the last time I, I did go to that driving range. Like I said, it was yeah. a, it was a real fun afternoon. Fun, it was right? a very social yeah. fun afternoon and surprisingly physical. I was sweating buckets at the end yeah. of it. Um, Even with families, uh, you know, sometimes I bring my wife and kid and they have a Thai meal usually at the range or there's maybe a beauty salon there or a massage place or something for children to do to meet meet his friends or her friends. Um, it's a very good afternoon. It's maybe for a few hundred baht. You can have some fun for an afternoon if you don't have much to do. And yeah, you get some workout when you get home. You feel like you've accomplished something. And the next day, you can't lift your arms to type on the keyboard because you're not used to using those muscles, at least in my case. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, well, instead of going to the gym or instead of riding a bicycle, you can try going to a you know, driving range. And it's uh, really no investment and nothing more than going to a shopping mall, really. Right, right. All right, Mark. Well, thanks a lot for coming on. It's interesting. And and I know there's there's a whole bunch about this that I don't, I don't see and I don't get because I'm not a golfer. But um, I know a lot of people are. And uh, yeah, listeners, if you're interested in, in coming to Thailand uh, and playing a bit of golf, check out golf, golfasian.com. That's, that's your right. website, right? Yep. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And uh, I mean, if you do live here, uh, I mean, take Mark's advice and visit some of those courses and, um, you know, check it out. And maybe, maybe you might see me on the, on the course <laughs> one day. Probably not. But um, I know a lot of people will still be there regardless, because like I said, I am in distinct, distinct minority. And it seems like golf in Thailand uh, is, has got a very bright future. <laughs> Certainly a lot of fun. So if you haven't tried it, everybody should get out once and see how they like it and make their own decision. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mark. Well, thanks for coming on and explaining it to me. And yeah. uh, and I, I, I hope that um, the Bangkok podcast golf, golf core <laughs> will be out there in force. So yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you very much, sir. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, if anybody wants to contact me and play around the golf, I'd be happy to uh, to get out. It's my pastime to instead of being at the gym, so I'll uh, happy to host around the golf at uh, one of the Army courses or at the replica course that I just mentioned or anywhere else in between. I'll join you. I'll drink the beer. You play uh-huh. the golf. It'll be a perfect match. No, we'll share the beer and I'll play golf and then it's a deal. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Dude, this interview reminded me of just my life in general because uh, my whole life I've been surrounded by golfers. My dad, my dad is a huge golfer. Oh, I've yeah. got a couple brother-in-laws who are golfers. I've got friends who like to golf, both back home, and then I've got friends in Thailand who, who worked in the golfing industry. Uh, and uh, it's funny. I've I have golfed, and it's just it never stuck. I never got into it. It's it's not really so much that. It, I guess it is a little bit like I don't get it. It's kind of like some of the stuff you said in the interview, where I'd rather just walk around in nature, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, and rather, rather than out on, on an unshaded patch of grass. I think um, part of it is uh, when I, maybe it's just I'm just not good at golf. Maybe that's it. Because I, personally for me, I, just, I find golf extremely frustrating. So mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I mean, again, I've golfed a bunch with my buddies, but just not as much as the real golfers, but whatever, when they drag me, I'll go. And then yeah. I've gone to the driving range. But... I'm the guy that just, you know, the ball is shooting in multiple directions. And after like four or five <laughs> attempts, I'm, I'm smashing my club. I'm like, damn it. It just if people I, are screaming, women screaming and windows smashing I, in the background. Maybe I just don't have the patience for it, but it, well, I know so many, so many people that I'm close to in life are into it that even though personally I, I haven't worked it out or it doesn't work for me. I know so many cool people who golf that I'm, I feel like I'm pro golf. I support it. Yeah, me too. And I'm definitely crap at it. Like I, I just, I've tried it a couple times. Oh my of God, it's so I, frustrating. It's so damn frustrating. Yeah, I just can't get the ball to go straight. And, um, but you know, that being said, uh, the last time I was at uh, uh, a driving range with with was with our buddy Scott, um, and uh, I really liked it. It's a hell of a fun time. Just go with a buddy and have some beers. I usually have fun. You agreed. Yeah, and like Mark and I were talking about, there's that giant new thing coming into to, to Bangkok, that giant new complex that's going to have like multiple floors of a driving range and stuff like that. It's a really fun afternoon out, dude. I went to one of those. Uh, I went to one of those back in the states. It was a blast. Yeah, it's great. But man, I'll tell you, after about 20 minutes of that, I was dripping with sweat. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I, I it's it's easy to make fun of golf because it's a lot of old men walking around. But it is hard, man. It is hard swinging a, a club that hard with that much precision. And it probably takes a hell of a lot more stamina than people like you or I who don't play it like to joke about. So, but I don't know. Uh, I think it's a great, uh, you know, I think it's a great thing to do while in Thailand because uh, although I am certainly not an expert, I have many friends who uh, who praise the golf courses here. So, and just yeah. to, not just in Thailand, but just Southeast Asia in general. I think this yeah, we're is, clearly in the minority here. Yeah, but I think this is a great place to come to golf. Yeah, it's also really interesting what he said, too, about how a golf course and the benefits it gives to the surrounding community, like they can be real like economic drivers for, for you know, towns. and the For sure, for sure, so yeah. It's, it's great. So, yeah, many thanks to Mark for coming on the show. That's really cool. I, I learned a lot, um, and I know a ton of people here are looking forward to, for things to get back up and rolling in Thailand and Asia so they can uh, come and check out golf here. So, so yeah, check out uh, Golf Asian. Uh, they seem like they got a really good thing going, and a lot of people are really interested, like you said, Ed, to come to, to Thailand to check out the golf courses. So uh, how do you say? Let me finish with a pun and say get on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, that's, about, that's about Bangkok podcast level, so I approve. <laughs> that's also a dad joke. A that's double, about, as, that's about as witty as we get. That's right. <laughs> so many thanks, Mark. It was great for you to come on. All right, let's get into some love, loathe, or live with, where one of us picks a particular aspect of living in Bangkok, which we then discuss and decide if it's something we love about living here, loathe about living here, or have come to accept as something that we just have to learn to live with no matter how we feel about it. The last time Ed asked me what I thought of people who cover their mouth with their hand when they use a toothpick, a pretty (laughs) specific one. So this week it's my turn. So I'm going to keep this real simple, Ed, mostly because I can't think of anything else right now. What do you think of the Thai tea, not Thai coffee, 
but Thai tea, the stuff that has that distinctly orange glow to it. With Hate milk it. in it. Hate really? it. Really? I'm a really? loath. Yeah, I'm a loath. I don't like it. Why not? Don't get it. It's funny. I'm. The, the bottom line is I'm not really, I'm just not, well, number one, I'm not a tea person in general. Uh, I just don't get it. I'm, 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 I can deal with some herbal teas that have more flavor, but I mean like true tea, I, I've just never been into it. Uh, and, and then, and a lot of Thai tea, well, there's a lot of varieties of Thai tea, but some of them just pile on the sugar or the cream. And I'm just not into that, you know, cause you're hiding the actual flavor of something. Uh, so, you know, it, it, almost every level I could, I could almost take every level, like, for example, like the, the free water that they put a little, apparently <laughs> they've talked a, about that before. Yeah. They put a little bit of tea in. I think, you know, so, so it's a like, guy with an eyedropper going, yeah, it's like drop. slightly, <laughs> slightly orangish free water. I don't like that. Uh, and then like the, the true proper tea. I don't know. What can I tell you, man? I'm not a fan. Not into it. I love it. Love it. I'm a huge fan of it. In, in, in like just pure, like do you mix stuff in there? Like are you like, what are you putting in there? The stuff, the, 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 the cha, cha nom, the, with the, like the Thai tea with milk in it, the iced tea. Oh yeah. Like Delicious, the classic. Like, no, but yeah. Yeah, whatever. So, I mean, my thing now is I'm trying not to have any animal products, so I don't want the milk. But I mean, the, you know, back in the day, I have tried the, the, the you know, like the classic Thai tea, and I get it. But it's just, it, it's just the same old. Let's just put some fat and sugar in something and make it taste better. This describes most of my cooking skill. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's just like, <laughs> hey, fat and sugar. Let's make this stuff that doesn't taste very good taste better. So let's let's consume a lot of fat and sugar. Yeah, I'm not saying it's healthy. It's definitely not. It's like liquid. It's like a liquid version of a Krispy Kreme donut. But I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't say it, uh, it's. Uh, what, I'm personally not into it. I don't like it. it. It doesn't mean like once you put all that sugar and fat in it, it's not that it tastes bad. It doesn't taste bad. So that's not what I'm saying. It's just not. It's not my thing. All right, fair enough. I'll have yours. <laughs> I'll order one for me, one for you, and I'll drink both. <laughs> no worries. No problem. <laughs> Before we go, a big thanks to our patrons who support the show. Patrons get a ton of cool perks and the warm, fuzzy feeling knowing that they're helping support the show. Find out more by clicking support on our website. And connect with us online. We're Bangkok Podcast on social media, bangkokpodcast.com on the web, or simply bangkokpodcast at gmail.com. We love hearing from our listeners and always reply to our messages. Damn right. You can also listen to each episode on YouTube. You can send us a voicemail online that we can feature on the show, or you can reach out to me on, directly on Twitter, where I am BKK Greg. So thanks for listening, folks. Take care out there, and we'll see you back here next week. No doubt. God, I've started to get heartburn much more often now than I ever did. I don't even know what heartburn is. I'm not sure I've ever experienced it. Probably not, you health freak vegan. <laughs> but uh, it's it hurts. And the only thing I can do is take these like antacid pills, but apparently they're not very good for you. So Wait, then, so antacid, course, antacid pills are bad for you? Uh, that's, what I've, that's what I've heard. Huh. Someone told me, you know. Uh, so, you read it on the internet. It must be true. Not even that legitimate. Someone told me. <laughs> you trust the internet. You can't trust people. <laughs> All right. <clears throat>